So anyway, I want you to know that I haven't just rushed to the very first Anderson character I thought of to help me with this week's intro, thereby cutting down on my workload over the festive season. Oh dear me, no. I have meticulously studied dozens of possible candidates, and I've come to the conclusion that you are far and away the best man to select the final randomizer of 2020. Yes, sir. That's what I am, if and you say so. Yes, well, um... Uh, did you have a nice Christmas, Clooney? I mean, did you do anything interesting? I've been thinking. Well, it's never too late to start, I suppose. But uh, anyway, what do you say to uh, pressing the old randomizer button today, huh? Well, I just don't know what to say. Well, you could say yes, I suppose. Otherwise, we're never going to get started here. Yes, sir. Well, go on then, choose an episode. You mean put my head in? Well, no, not inside, just, just on the button. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Yes, it's a tricky thing, but I think you've got the hang of it. Us mountain boys was always noted for our intelligence. Yes. And here's the printout. Let's see. Oh. What does it say? I can't believe this. Clooney, you've only gone and pulled up the oldest thing in the randomizer. Would you believe it? Yes, the very first and indeed only surviving episode of Twizzle. Very interesting. Well, let's find out. Yes, we're ending 2020 by heading all the way back to 1957 for Twizzle and Footso. Yes, sir. Well, what a surprise. We are closing out 2020 on the randomizer with the earliest episode I have available because it's, well, it's Twizzle. It's the only surviving episode of Twizzle, Twizzle and Footso. Have you heard of a Twizzle toy? Yes. You haven't? I have. Well, that's because there's only one of them. I do like that, actually. Uh, I love this in this this lovely intro narration and this pull into the toy shop window. Toy shop? There is something almost magical about this, um, despite how undeniably primitive it is. But I also love when she says, well, that's because there's only one of them, because we only have one Twizzle. Well, this is it. The gollywog was quite new. Here he is on the shelf with his friend. No, all the things that twist. The bear and the new arrival. Say, a gollywog. Funny looking toy you are. I've never seen anything like you before. What are you? <laughs> I'm Twiddle. And I do. Oh, what? I love that he, they don't say, who are you? It's just, what are you? My God, what are you? I don't know what you mean. I've never seen anyone twizzle before. Oh, oh, oh. You can tell he hasn't been here long. There's lots of twizzling goes on round these parts. We I wonder if this is also the same gollywog who was in um, Torchy. Anyway, Twizzle is doing his thing. Boo! Extending his arms and legs, as he does. Oh my goodness. And I would have to assume that's quite ambitious for, for such a crude puppet to do. My goodness, you are clever. <laughs> well... I don't know. I made that. If I want to reach anything, I just twiddle my arms and legs until I'm as tall as a lamppost. You must be very expensive to buy. I cost two and sixpence. Oh. And so expensive that I think I'll have to stay in the toy shop forever. For I don't know any boy or girl who could afford to buy me. Yeah, but this toy shop only has about a dozen things in it. So. We love having you here. That's very oh. kind of you, Mr. Bear. Poor old moldy Mr. Bear. Mr. Bear, oh no. We won't go there. Toy shop is my home. Ah. Is that it? Oh no. Oh my goodness. The next day, a little girl. We're looking up a little girl's bottom. She looked at the train. Oh dear. And then she looked right through the window. And straight through your soul. Yeah, she's quite, quite sinister, this one. I think because she's not got a blinking mechanism, her eyes look very big. And, a green and rather unsettling. I'm kind of I'm kind of torn on how to approach talking about this because uh, I don't want to miss anything. This is my one chance to talk about Twizzle. Hey, doll up there! I saved up two shillings, so I hope he doesn't cost any more than that. I'm afraid he cost two and sixpence. But it's also interesting to look at this compared to um, Torchy, which was only a year or so later. And I know I say, oh, Torchy, this, look at Torchy, this is so primitive, blah, 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 blah. But you can see, looking at Torchy, Make such a noise. how much this show must have evolved over the course of its run. Because, you know, Torchy, as crude and ugly as it often looks, 
has like you know more than one camera angle per scene. For he certainly didn't want to belong to such a Oh poor old Twizzle is trembling. Hi, Twizzle. You can hide in here if you like. Oh, well, thank you so much. That's it, he's gonna hide in the jack in the box so the naughty little girl doesn't buy him. Well I come in. It's rather like Toy Story with all the toys being alive, except um they're being alive right in front of the humans who just don't actually notice them. Are you sure you haven't got two and six? He's really such a lovely toy that is... Oh, good gracious me, where has he got to? Needless to say, the strings are just... Maybe he's falling on the floor. ...so visible as to be completely obscuring the puppet's faces at times. I'm not going to leave this shop until I can take him with me. But this little girl is, is suitably horrible. Sitting on my toes. Ouch! Oh, do be careful. Very reminiscent of the children from Torchy. Tickling. I'm sure I'm going to sneeze. The shopkeeper will find you if you do. Why would a toy be able to sneeze? Count to five. One, two, three, four. <laughs> oh. What was that noise? It's coming from the jack in the box. <gasps> now he's a very nice toy. Why don't you have him instead, eh? Huh? Why don't you just leave me alone? He's got the rush. Why can't you blink? Uh, have a look at him for yourself. He's awful! What a dreadful face! Yeah. I wouldn't have him if he was. And the Jack in the Box isn't much better either. I want that Twizzle toy, so you'd better hurry up and find him for me. Why don't you come back to my? Strange that the um, the human puppets actually seem to be smaller than the the Gollywog and the Teddy Bear. Like it looks like if he had a mind to it, the gollywog could reach over and, and snap the little girl's neck. By then, I'll cry and scream and stab Yes, and yes, yes, I know all that. Aww. But I promise I'll have him ready for you. Well, <sighs> that's that then. Dear, dear, this is most worrying. My jaw doesn't move at all. Hmm. It wasn't until very late that night, when the shop was closed, that Twizzle dared to come out. Oh dear, he's really scared of that little girl. Oh my goodness, that's quite sinister the way he looms out of the Jack in the Box. Oh dear. And the Gollywog just looks at him with that hideous open jaw and sort of rictus grin, lolling his head around. I think I could Twizzle now if I tried. Oh. We'll have to find a better hiding place tomorrow. The shopkeeper's sure to look in here sooner or later. I can't think of anywhere else but Twizzle to hide. You'll have to burn down the shop. You can do, Twizzle. You'll have to run away. <laughs> oh, poor Twizzle. But I don't want to run away. This is my home. Yeah, he spends all day sitting on a shelf doing nothing. It's beautiful. And it's much better to run away on your own than to belong to a naughty child. She'll pull off your arms and legs in no time at all. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. How awful. Yeah. I can see I will have to run away. Well, sucks to be you guys. I'm off. Look. The door is locked. The window's open. You can jump into the street. But I might get broken. No, you won't. I'll throw you. To me. And I'll tell you what to do. Now, get some matches. Climb up onto the window ledge. I like this teddy bear, actually. He looks quite old and mouldy, but the voice is a nice fit. Oh my goodness, a new, a new angle. Twizzle making his way up onto some uh, other toys, and toy boxes, and what looks like a safe. Up to the wide open window that the toy shop owner has, uh, has left for anyone to break in and uh, steal his, well, not much, really. The pavement's an awfully long way down. Of course it isn't. It's going to be very difficult. Just twizzle your arms and legs, and you'll be able to reach the ground. Just do that thing you've been able to do your whole life that you're now apparently forgetting about. Good grief, Twizzle. Do I have to think of everything for you? And see us one day. Oh. Goodbye, teddy bear. Goodbye, gollywog. And thank you, Jack in the Box. Goodbye, oh. Twizzle. We won't forget you. Oh. And Twizzle jumped into the street and hurried off as fast as his twizzly legs would carry him. Oh, that click is quite disturbing. 
Um, goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Again, he is definitely taller than than the normal human characters. He walked all that night, and he walked all the next day. Oh. Oh, these backgrounds are so. You know, they're they're clearly just hand drawn little cartoon like almost backgrounds, but they are they are quite charming. And there's uh, something about knowing that there's just a puppeteer with this puppet draped, uh, sort of dangling over the, the the top of this backdrop that's rather endearing. I'm so tired. Soon it grew dark again, and the wind began to blow. The seasons changed and the weather grew worse, but Twizzle kept on walking. Blow me off my feet! Oh. Hello! What a funny looking house that is! Why, it's not a house at all! It's a dog kennel, and it's just my size! So Twizzle wriggled inside and made himself comfortable. Inside, it was warm and cosy. Twizzle sat and listened to the noise of the wind. And despite the, the, the Twizzle puppets looking somehow even cruder than the, the Torchy puppets, I do find myself drawn more into this world. This is slightly more... Sounds like a very fierce animal. Uh, slightly more a comforting world than the world of Torchy. I mean, maybe in the remaining 51 episodes it, it leapt off the deep end much the same way Torchy did, but... Um, I don't know, this seems a bit more wholesome. He saw a yellow eye. Oh. Then he saw another yellow eye. Oh. Ooh. And a black nose and long, twitching whiskers. And his foot's over the cat. Oh. Mm -hmm. As voiced by Denise Breyer. What are you doing in my house? I gather this is a character she has a, a fondness for even now. Um, even though uh, Futso doesn't really look much like a cat, he looks more like a sort of spider-like creature. What's your name? My name is Futso. Oh. I've got such big paws, you see, that I'm always falling over them. Twizzle's inability to close his mouth, or indeed move it when he has dialogue, is uh, actually getting to be quite distracting. When he's not talking, his head's at a cockeyed angle, he just looks like... Away from the house where oh, I, live. I don't know, he looks drunk. Always laughing at my big paws. Oh. How funny. We've both run away, and we've both met each other. We'll have to be friends and stay together all the time. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Yeah, uh, I've been very lonely myself. Oh. Watch out! Watch out! Of course, that's Nancy Nevinson doing the voice of Twizzle. Uh, later reappeared in, in UFO, of all things. She's in The Man Who Came Back, very briefly. Adventure. That's it. Curled up in the doghouse. Now I rest my head on your tail. With Futso and... Um, yeah, the puppeteers are trying to get these puppets to do things they're not quite capable of. I can't sleep! Curling up next to each other to sleep. Oh, sorry, Twizzle, but I always purr when I'm happy. Oh. We all just have to get used to it. Oh, dear. If I don't get used to it, I'll have to put some cotton wool into my ear. How nice this is. How warm and cozy. In no time at all, Twizzle and Futso are fast asleep even though neither of their eyes are capable of closing. ...to have together. Ah, oh, and that was it. That was where it all began. First episode of Twizzle, Twizzle and Futso, directed by Jerry Anderson. Well, well, well. It's hard to judge that on, on its own, because I'd love to know where the rest of the series went after that. I imagine it probably leaned more towards the torchy, you know, toy land antics. Um, but as a... As a first episode, as a little kid in the 50s who hadn't seen anything more interesting in the puppet field, I would definitely have come back for more of that, I think. That's it. Bye, Twizzle.